Hi, you can see the photo of this cartoon bank from the New Yorker collection depicting the works of a scientist. By definition, a scientist is a person who is studying or has an expert knowledge of one or more of the natural or physical sciences. And at this point, they knew that it's addictive. And this photo coming from the Vox magazine telling us um, that citizen science, an emerging field of science, is booming during the pandemic. Uh, from backyard astronomy to birding, amateurs have been busy collecting data and making real discoveries. And in connection to today's convention, the 56th Biota National Convention and Scientific Sessions and the 28th Biennial Conference of the AAB, I am here to present to you my research entitled Designing Citizens of Science and Project-Based Learning Class 1 Pedagogy Modules in Learning Philippine Ecology and Biodiversity. I am Steven Capilitan, MST, from the De La Salle University in Manila. Just a, just a quick background about the presenter. I am the founder of the Citizen Plus Philippines, also a member of the Global Youth Biodiversity Network, and currently a distant biology student of the DLSU Manila. Some of my researchers are focusing on conservation science, systems thinking, uh, the case study approach, and also in, in, in biodiversity education. So what you're seeing in the background is a remnant of the past. These are animals, plants that are becoming extinct and brought to us the natural ecosystems disturbance. And here we go. We have experienced the pandemic. It brought to us limited workspace. It has came to the point where in um, all conferences were held virtual and since we are restricting the, the spread of the virus uh, I think this uh, the, the digital age has been promoted in, in many different subfields in many different aspects because um, promoting the use of digital media into conservation science is a new tool to us educators, especially in the biology field, because as you can see, not all superheroes have superpowers and wear capes. Some just go about their daily routine of conserving the web of life. And this is the advocates. I am an advocate of uh, the mainstream biodiversity, and I also have to help the people understand the web of life and the importance of life. And we are now hunting heroes against extinction. And this Citizen Plus Philippines was the um, revolutionary movement for us to, you know, inform everyone, not just for science majors, not just for teachers, educators, and students, but also for the common public that we need to understand that the earth needs to breathe, that the earth is changing and all of a sudden we might be losing some of our precious creatures that we are um, used to see before and this platform is not um, available in, in, uh, in Facebook and in Twitter and in Instagram and yeah just to give you an insight about what citizen uh, science is and how biodiversity in the Philippines was being maintained researchers a lot of um, infographics about the um, the current situation in the pandemic all of those stuff were available in this particular platform and also I am uh, constantly updating my YouTube channel to get, inform everyone that uh, as a teacher we need to um, redefine STEM education and in redefining STEM education this is the involvement of media and it should be media literate in order for us to have uh, address some of the ill-defined scientific concepts. And these are where the reasons. These were the reasons why I decided to go into citizenship science. And, and the question, what is citizenship science? This is the involvement of the public, amateurs, students, teachers, non-science majors into some of the scientific um, works, researches, 
adverse and all of that uh, just simply contributing to to, to to research and as we all know that the, the the common status quo of a scientist is that they are held um they're holding their laboratory microscopes they're inside the laboratory wearing um their gowns and constricted to a certain place and they and we also have this misconception of them being weird but this is revolutionary because we are trying to make use of the people just to participate in science if you are if you love bird watching if you are into um collecting data from the nature or using your tools your your applications then you can be a part of this citizen science, citizen science. and this this is an emerging field since in the US we they have a lot of uh, projects that are being held online uh, yeah you, you can see that they said citizen scientists are the building tools for the future we have looking for projects and if you want to see some of them they are available in uh, the size starter there are also a zoo universe that could help people powered research there's a lot of um, featured projects that you could be getting involved with in in the US and all the Western countries. In the Philippines, in the case of the Philippines, uh, they have started, okay, this projects of your citizen science. Um, one of this is uh, part of a understanding the relationship between the volunteers' motivations and learning outcomes of the citizen science in a rice ecosystem so this is this are this were the participants of the study and this was a long time ago this is 2018 um, another recent challenge that was being done in Davao City the iNaturalist study okay this is using an application named iNaturalist they have explored the Davao City's urban biodiversity and placed the city in the global map of biodiversity so they have used this bio blitz this is a fun intensive short study of um, biodiversity in a specific place where they have to look for any organisms that are available in that area and yeah they can use this iNaturalist it's just a track okay this is a, a repository that are that is available online it does have to look for like a uh, class or genera of um organisms that you want that you would like to study and this is the map of observations that are be that is being um traced and being founded by this group of people from um davao city and this this was highlighted in the iNaturalist bio blitz activity and these are just photos of the bio blitz 2020 held in mount apple in davao region you can see that the the kids were they they, they have they went into the the jungle in the nature during the pandemic and it's a really nice uh, way to escape the, the 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 zoom fatigue that they're experiencing in um yeah it's it's really um enjoying to see the people who is participating in science but we could be involved even though we are in the urban setup because um, there are a lot of projects that is being done by the Haribon Foundation. This is being uh, this is held being every July eighth weekend of every year. This is Birds in the City, and um, it aims to raise awareness on urban birds that are shared need for the green areas, and um, they are giving out these particular bird guides. In the birds in the city list this is available in the harbon foundation and this is where being used by for uh, students in ateneo de manila university birds in the city i uh, just have to go and find them choose a place choose a date and time count for 30 minutes and upload simply because there are a lot of instances where we are confused with what is a cryptic species okay and then their emergence um especially in birds especially in in some insects and butterflies um this is held to be as a window on bio and biodiversity and conservation um a research done by 
um, David Bickford and Lohman, which highlights on the lack of systematic studies that is leaving many questions whether cryptic species are more common in such a particular groups of habitats or latitudes or certain groups. And we're trying to uh, make uh, a um, bridge the gap. Okay, we're trying to bridge the gap between the confusion that is being held in some lit literature. And this is my goal as a researcher when I made this um, research, this eBird Essentials, uh, highlighting the use of eBird as an online database for bird enthusiasts, scientists, and also for amateur naturalists. This was from National Geographic and California Academy of Sciences. Um, both of these were set side tools. And simply when you do science classroom eBird um, observations, you have to document your observations using your smartphones. You share it with the cloud, with your fellow naturalists, and you deliberate your results. And in the Philippines, this is constantly updating. It says eBird. Okay, you can see that when, when we search Philippine Eagle, uh, we have highlighted some places in Mindanao and some parts of the zone where the, the Philippine Eagle was spotted. Well, these were just some of the artworks from the respondents of my study. They have made um, some of like th these caricatures of birds and their scientific names where are they found by diversity areas okay and what are the roles of these organisms in a specific type of habitat and in the entire ecosystem and one of my goals in my research is to localize instructional materials this is so much fun because we are, I am researching and looking out for some problems, issues in the Philippines concer concerning biodiversity and introducing it to a, a an urban classroom in Cubao, Quezon City uh, is really a, a breakthrough, I think, because they haven't been involved in, in any of these citizen science activities and also these instructional materials were, con were the concept of my research, okay? The, the instructional materials were made by me following a specific um, framework about citizen, citizen science and the plus one pedagogy, PBL creation. And this is just the highlight of the Philippine key biodiversity areas by ecosystem coverage. This is really big, six times as big as New York Metro, three times times as big as Tokyo City, Japan, 35 times in Bangkok, Thailand, and there's a lot of key conservation sites in the Philippines, not just in islands of Luzon, but also in islands in, of Visayas and, and Mindanao. And these were just um, the ESEP class of 2018 and their activities when they have um, involved in a particular Activity, uh, PBL, the project based learning modules from my research. They have like role playing and also me as a mediator of uh, the lecture series for this particular subject, the biodiversity. Um, this is a project based learning pedagogy, and what is project based learning pedagogy? is an interdisciplinary framework which is designed to elevate your consciousness, accelerate your achievement through the 21st century skills, and it builds your capacity for our nation's youth to compete in a global economy. It's just simply preparing them to uh, participate in, in the workplace and to achieve more seeking for greater heights and reaching success. Technically, that's plus one. And, and again, um, I follow this concept, this interdisciplinary with association of your citizenship science skills, accelerated achievement, and the plus on pedagogy, and following the, the standards of the K-12 by DepEd. Some of the big ideas were also highlighted here because this is a teacher-designed activity uh, when you focus on these uh, essential questions, okay, and um, project objectives. The students were 
the participants were introduced with this plus one topic modules, which is basically coming from the DepEd's curriculum, science curriculum, from ecosystems constituents, uh, mesocosm studies, cosmopolitan species, and uh, measuring ecosystem diversity and all of that, um, where the the overall subjects and lessons that are being intended for the grade nine students in the science curriculum. On the other hand, this project-based learning modules is coming from the idea that uh, the, the eBird projects, okay, eBird projects, if you're trying to see what are the birds of the specific key biodiversity areas, then um, these modules will teach the students, okay, to formulate scientific explanations, to produce I wonder boards, creating their executive summary outlines and how they will propose their projects as if they are creating um, a big projects okay specifically in 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 um, bird watching and these are the plus one topics and I focused here in my presentation the cosmopolitan species which is highlighting the famous Philippine tertiary and here in a plus one topic module sample uh, highlighted the cosmopolitan species and some of the questions like how does geographic isolation contribute to the emergence of your cosmopolitan species and all of that. These are being followed up with a learning activity, hitting two birds with one story. All of these um, guide questions were just introducing them how did they define, discuss the species concepts. And some of reflection and commitment part. Uh, how would you help your conservationists to protect disruptions of your healthy ecosystems and also local Filipino farmers and their efforts to grow produce for the people? These are just snippets of the lecture presentation about Philippine Tertiary and Tropical Paradise, some of the ecological regions in the Philippines. What happened, I introduced a pre-test before introducing the material to the students. And I have measured also their post-test score gains, wherein um, majority of them, I mean like 80%, did, did um, improve their scores from the pre-test after they have been introduced with the instructional materials. They were, they, the IMs were analyzed through their objectives, their content, also with the format and language, also with the presentation and usefulness by validators and uh, some of this were um, weighed according to the needs of the students and there are some recommendations that is being um, suggested by the panelists like, to design and to create more six side projects this is what I'm telling you learning activities should be for outdoor setup since most of the activities were just indoors and for bigger population and covering all year levels, uh, we have to focus more on the endemic invertebrates and for hybridofauna and all of that. We, these were just suggestions from my research. And that's it. Um, the last question is, do you want to be a modern hero for our Philippine biodiversity? Well, you must join me in this particular endeavor. Maraming salamat po and have a nice day. Thank you.